welcome back we'll start with the next topic that is introduction to cell now as we all know there are two types of cell the plant cell and the animal cell so we'll be understanding those in a separate lesson when we'll be talking about the details of those two separately however for now we'll just focus on cell now cell is the basic structural and functional unit of a living organism now let's talk about a kind of historical perspective so it was first lemark who said there is no body which is uh, no living body which exists without cell so every living body must and must have cell the study of the form structure and composition of cell is known as cytology again if we deal with the structure chemistry and functioning of the cell we call that stream as cell biology now when we classify cell there could be either single cellular animals or multicellular animals single cellular are those which uh, which have a single cell so let's say amoeba bacteria yeast acetabularia so all those are single cellular animals a basic characteristic would be they have an independent existence and can perform all essential functions when it comes to multicellular organisms like human beings it is made up of many cells so you say a newborn baby would have two two into 10 raised to power 12 cells as compared to a man of 60 kg who might have up to 100 trillion cell now each of this cell has a complex composition or structure so each of the cell you would have the nucleus cytoplasm then you would have the chromosomes dna and rna in each and every cell so understanding this basic unit of life is very very important now again there has been a confusion by many let's say if there is a large organism let's say when we talk about ostrich or say elephant it's not that since an organism is big the size of the cell would be big it's not at all that the size of the cell would remain the same but it would be more in number so it's important to understand the basic idea that if the organism is big it's not a re it's not a prerequisite that the cell size should also be big with the size of the organism now as we said cell is the basic building block it's the basic structural and functional unit now based on the functions of the cell there are various modifications in the cell that you can see so a cell for example a nerve cell would have a different function from a cell which provides blood or that's that's a kind of rbc cells again it's a smallest unit which can independently exist and these cells are totipotent that means a single cell has the capability to produce the whole organism so even if you have one cell with that one cell you can produce the whole organism now when we talk about the hierarchy in cell structure it's very very important so cell is the lowest unit of life then you would have with a group of cells would form tissue a group of tissues would form organ a group of organ will form organ system and this is how we understand the division of labor so at each and every successive stage you would have division of labor that exists based on the hierarchy that you are talking about so based on the cell functions you would have the similar kind of tissue and similar kind of organ system that would be formed now pasteur explained that life originates from life so if you have a life that exist prior that means you had a cell and new cells would be formed only as a result of those original cells again Haeckel explained that nucleus is the key of a cell which stores and transmits the hereditary information now how can we see the cells cells as we said are very minute a small infant will have 2 into 10 raised to power 12 cells so it's nearly impossible for us to see a cell by a naked eye so what is re required is an instrument which is known as microscope now this was first discovered by jensen in in 1590 it was later modified by galileo and then by robert hooke robert hooke gave the concept of new microscope and these these were used to study the cork cells the cork cells had a structure structural arrangement which was in a form of uh, in a form of honeycomb structure so you had a kind of honeycomb structure that was seen under the cork cells 
and this was given by Hooke in his book which was known as Micrographia. Again, Malfighi called the term cell as secules or utricles. Then you had have the Leuven Hook who, was, who is considered as the first person to observe, describe and sketch a free living cell. This is very very important from MCQ perspective because sometimes you are directly asked the names and you would have the person who first observed, described and sketched a free living cell. The correct answer would be Leuven Hook. Again, Brown was the one who discovered nucleus. Dujardin explained there is some semi-fluid material that exists beyond the nucleus and he called it as sarcode. And later on, this sarcode was known as protoplasm by Purkinje and Von Moll. Chauvin explained the concept of discovered the cell membrane and later this name cell membrane was given by Nageli and Kramer. So these are some of the basic facts which you must remember. Now when we talk about cell there are two basic theories. First is the cell theory and second is the modern concept of cell theory which is also known as cell doctrine. So we will first talk about the cell theory. This was given by Sheldon and Chauvin and Chauvin explained that animal cells do not have cell wall. And under this theory what Sheldon and Chauvin tried to explain was that organisms are made up of cells every cell has a capacity has a capacity to form a new cell so these are the two basic things that they try to explain these cells are the basic centers for a structural and functional unit they act as a structural and functional unit of life each cell has a protoplasm along with the nucleus that exists and all the cells are alike in terms of the chemistry and the physiology. So all the cells would have the nucleus, would have the cytoplasm. In those terms, you would say that all the cells are alike. And finally, the activity of an organism as a whole. So let's say if I am walking, talking. So all those activities are a sum total of the individual activity that is performed by each and every cell of the body. So what each and every cell of my body is doing is ultimately resulting into a motion that could be walking or talking or so on. So this was the concept which was laid down under the cell theory. Later on you had the modern cell theory or cell doctrine that was given. And this was again a kind of extension of the existing cell theory. It again gave the, some of the similar concepts that you have cell as a basic unit of structure and function. Life exists in the cell and all living things are composed of cells. These cells have the capacity to survive independently, but organelles cannot survive independently. It's only the cells that can survive independently. So that was a main aspect that was given under the modern cell theory, which was different from the cell theory given by Chauvin and Sheldon. They again said that cells could be modified. So these are some of the new concepts that were propounded under the modern cell theory. So they said these cells can be modified based on the function. So let's say you have nerve cells and the muscle cells which are elongated which have to cover the complete body. Then again a cell grows and multiplies on its own. There is an element that passes from one generation to another within the cell and that governs the life which passes from one generation to the another. New cells as they said exist uh, arise from the pre-existing cells and all the cells therefore would have the common ancestry because you would have new cells that would be formed from the existing cells. So you would have a kind of common ancestry that would occur for the cells. All the cells are totipotent that means a single cell has a power to create the whole organism or has a capacity to create the whole organism. No organism can have activity if there is no cells. So cells are an integral part of the functional aspect of a human body. Now what were some of the major objections to the cell theory? The first objection was there are certain cell uh, organisms like virus which are acellular which do not have cell. Then how come we say? that cells exist for all living organisms. So that was the first objection. Later on there was another objection where they said there are some organisms where the body is not differentiated into the cells. For example, rhizopus. So this was again 
an objection because under cell theory we talked about the concept of differentiation. Protozoa have uninucleate differentiated body that is again a unique concept since it is uninucleate it should have a kind of common structure and common function then how it is differentiated. Bacteria and cyanobacteria again do not have nucleus. RBCs and sieve, sieve tube cells do not have nucleus. So, these are some of the exceptions to the cell theory that was, that was given under both the modern cell theory and the cell theory. And again you have the, the skin and the cock cells where protoplasm is replaced by some non-living material that exists in them. Now let us understand another important concept that talks about the surface volume ratio. Now I have three cubes here. This is the smallest and you have bigger cubes. So let us say this cube is 1 by 1 by 1, this is 2 by 2 by 2 and this is 3 by 3 by 3. So these are the dimensions of these cubes. So when I have the following dimensions with me, I can find the surface area and the volume for these cubes. So let us say the surface area would be 6a square and a cube would be the volume. So here the surface volume ratio would come as 3, 6 is to 1. Here it would come as 24 and 8, so it would be 3 is to 1 and finally there it would be uh, 54 and 27, so it would be 2 is to 1. That means the smallest cube has the highest surface volume ratio. That means a smaller cube has more ability to exchange material from outside. So it has higher ability to exchange information, exchange of fluid between the cell and the surrounding would be much higher in case of a smaller cube as compared to a bigger cube, that is the first thing. Again the cells which have high nucleus, uh, nucleocytoplasmic ratio, what would happen would be they would allow nucleus to exchange or to have better control on the peripheral activities. So you would have smaller cells which would usually have a higher surface uh, which would have a higher surface volume ratio and would also have a higher nucleocytoplasmic ratio and both of them would lead to higher exchange with the surroundings. Now what are the basic types of cells? We differentiate cells under three basic heads. The first is the undifferentiated or the stem cells. These are unspecialized and have the power of division. So all the apical cells at the meristems would be an example of the undifferentiated cell. The next would be the differentiated or the postmeteotic cells. These are specialized for better organization of the cell structure and these also avoid duplication. The third is dedifferentiated cells. These are the cells which revert back to undifferentiated state and they lose their specialization. So for example, the cork cambium of a plant, a healing of the wound, the regeneration in the animals, all these are examples of degenerated cells because they revert into the undifferentiated form and finally lose their specialization that they are doing. So these are the basic types of the cells. Now how do we compartmentalize the cellular life? Now these cells have selective permeability, they allow certain uh, things to move in and certain things to move out. They, they provide accumulation, they provide interconnections, they provide recognition for a specific purpose, they help in communication and exchange and finally they separate the cell from the extracellular medium. So these are some of the basic concepts where we differentiate cell or we compartmentalize the cell. Now what are the cell sizes? Cell can be a very minute structure to a bigger structure. We consider avian eggs to be the largest eggs. Eggs are generally large sized uh, cells. Then you have the longest cell which is considered as a nerve cell in human beings. You have the various size for RBC, lymphocytes and kidney and intestine cells that are given here. These are uh, let us say RBC is 7 micrometers in diameter and so on. The smallest cell is mycoplasma. Now the shape of the cell, now shape of the cell differs based on its function sometimes. So let us say on the surface you would mainly have the flat cells, flat cells, then you have the cortex which would be made of polygonal cells, RBC which is made of biconcave cells, the nerve cells which are long and sperm cells might have tail for mobility. So these are some of the uh, uh, cell shapes that are determined. 
Again, the next important topic is the prokaryotic and the eukaryotic cells, which we, which we would discuss in the next lesson. We would talk about the prokaryotic cells and then the eukaryotic cells and then the differences between the two. You can subscribe to our channel for more lectures on biology. Have a good day ahead.